Today is all about flexible filament. Over the years, I've had varying degrees of success when printing flexible filaments. A lot of the newer printers and extruders nowadays have a lot better chance at succeeding with flexible filament than we did in the past, but it can still be a somewhat challenging task. Now, there's a lot of different types of flex that are available in a lot of different colors, but the main thing that you want to look at when you're shopping for flexible filament is the shore hardness. And that always didn't make a lot of sense to me, but I found a lot of good graphics online that explain it a lot better than I probably can. So let's take a look. So this is the one that I found that actually makes the most sense to me, and it's really easy to understand what's going on here. Most of the filament manufacturers are going to use the Shore A scale because that's the hardness range that you're going to see in a flexible filament. Now there are some brands that use the D scale, but you're better off just converting that back to the A scale so it makes more sense when comparing it to other filaments. Most flexible filaments that you're going to see are going to be anywhere from a 60 to 100. So basically, this video is just going to be me trying out a lot of different types of flexible filament. And it's not going to be about the quality of the print that we get. It's going to be about if we can get a print out of it at all. And I have a pretty wide range of different flex here. And we're going to do all these prints on the Prusa Mark III because it does have Bontech gears that grab the filament from both sides and a really short filament path. Let me show you what that looks like. On the Mark III, you have the motor that's directly driving one of the Bontech gears, the one inside. And then on the door, it comes down to meet that gear, and it also gets driven at the same time by that gear that's on the motor shaft. So filament comes in here from the top, it meets those gears, it grips it on both sides, so it has less of a chance of getting loose. I have had flexible come around this gear and get sucked up and actually go over it, but hopefully that doesn't happen a whole lot today. It depends on how hard it is to get that filament off the spool. You definitely want a free spool when you're trying to run flexible on one of these extruder bodies. If the filament starts to tug at all, you're going to see issues. Also, the filament path on the Mark 3S extruder body is shorter than ever, even shorter than it was on the Mark 3. So the PTFE tube, you can see it right there, that goes all the way down into the hot end just to feed that filament to the throat. It's a fairly short distance. So you should be able to print quite a few different flexibles on this extruder body. So with those gears and the shorter filament path, the Mark III should be able to succeed on most types of flexible filament. But that's what we're going to find out in this video. Now before we get started printing, let's check out all the different filaments we're going to try and their specifications. First up, we just have some generic Inland brand from Micro Center TPE. This is the filament that I always recommend you try if you're just getting into flexible filament. They don't even give you a shore hardness rating, but it's not super flexible. It is somewhat rigid, but it's more than flexible enough to make things like gaskets if you wanted to. Plus, it's very affordable. You don't have to spend a lot to try some flexible filament out. Then we have Treed Flexibility. This actually was a sample that came in one of the maker boxes. They rate this stuff at a 74A and it is super flexible. It's like rubber bands. Not the most flexible I've seen, but this could be a challenge. Then we have this Fiberology Fiberflex filament. They rate this at around a 40D. So it's a fairly rigid flexible filament. It shouldn't be that hard to print. You can stretch it just a bit, but it's definitely not as stretchy as a lot of them that we see. Then we have some Filamentum Flex Fill. This is a 98A. This is pretty rigid filament. It is somewhat flexible, but it almost feels like you could break it. It's really close to the same consistency of a PLA, but it doesn't snap. So 98A should be fairly easy to print. And then we have some good old NinjaFlex. Now I say that because NinjaFlex is a lot of the times what people say when they're referring to flexible filament. NinjaFlex is an 85A shore hardness, so it's definitely pretty flexible stuff. You can stretch it quite a bit but it does kind of have a hard outer shell that a lot of the flexibles don't, so it's going to print just a little bit different than some of the others. It's almost like it's textured, so we'll see how that goes. Then we have some Kodak Flex 98. It's pretty much the same as the Fiberology Flex Fill. It's going to be a 98A shore hardness. Shouldn't be that difficult to print, but we'll give it a try. We also have some Ninja Flex Eel. This is conductive TPU. After we print it, let's take a reading on it just for fun. 
and this is a 90A short hardness. There's a little bit of flex to it. It's pretty comparable to this Inland TPE. Can't flex it too much, but you could definitely make a lot of stuff out of it if you needed some flex in your parts. And last but not least, the Master of Disaster. This is X60 filament from Dybase. Yes, it has a 60A short hardness, and this stuff might as well be spaghetti. You can wrap it around. You can do pretty much anything with this, except print it, probably. But we'll check that out. And to give you an idea of the quality that we can get out of these flexible filaments, these are some prints that I did before. This is the Treed Flexibility Filament. Remember, that's around a 74A. It's very flexy. And then this is the Inland TPE. Not near as flexible. And you can tell between the two that a retraction does a lot better job on this side because this one's quite a bit stiffer and it's a lot more efficient when it's trying to pull it back. A lot of times, depending on your extruder, if you're printing different flexes, you don't want any retraction at all because it's probably not going to do you any good and it's going to hurt you in the long run. But on most machines, you're not going to be able to achieve the same kinds of things you could with other filaments without lots and lots of tuning or maybe swapping out your extruder. To give you an idea, I did this overhang test on the Mark III with that Inland TPE. You can see this is 45 if you take a look at the back. Anything more than that, it kind of turns into a disaster. So there's all the filaments and we're almost ready to print, but a couple of tips if you're trying to print flexible. Depending on your bed surface, if you're using something like a PEI sheet, you're going to want to put something on there like glue stick as a separation layer because pretty much all flexibles are going to adhere to that permanently and you're not going to be able to get it off. These powder coated sheets, like the ones Prusa offers, work great for flexible filament. You can pop them right off after they cool down. Also, you might want to back up your first layer a little bit, maybe print just a little bit higher than you would for other filaments. Of course, you will have to slow down, and like I said before, retraction is going to be important. The more flexible the filament is, the less you're going to be able to use retraction because it's not going to do you any good, and it'll probably just cause a jam. So, with all that said, let's get to some prints. So while you're watching the time lapse, it's also important to mention that a lot of flexible filament is very hygroscopic. So it's going to collect moisture if it's just sitting around, especially in humid environments. So I recommend when you're not printing with it, store it in one of your dry boxes with desiccant to keep it as fresh as possible for as long as possible. You can also use a food dehydrator on flexible. The same rules apply for PLA that it does with most flex filaments. You don't want to get it too hot. You definitely don't want to use it on your car dash or something like that because it will melt. Now, back to the time lapse. And that was a long couple of days. I had a lot of failures trying to test this flexible filament, but I also had some success. So let's check out the results. So let's start with the Inland TPE. This is the cheapest filament of the bunch, and it is really the one that I recommend if you wanna try some flexible filament. 
This was my overhang test that I showed earlier, but this kind of shows you just how flexible it is. This is 10% infill. I print this stuff at 210 with a 60 degree bed. I do print it on the powder coated PEI sheet and I print it at Prusa's default speeds. And that's pretty quick actually. I print it at 100% feed rate. I don't do any tweaking to the printer. It will just print as is. Also flexible, either likes cooling or it doesn't like cooling. Inland, you can go both ways. This one is with cooling off. You can see it didn't do the smokestack very well. And this one is with cooling on. The smokestack came out a lot better, but it did add a little bit of stringing to it. Retraction on that filament and the overhang isn't all that great. The little vase mode prints turn out really squishy. This is the one from the top of the video, and it looks really good. Next, we have our Filamentum Flex Fill TPU 98A. This stuff is pretty hard filament. All of these, I did a flexible bar. It's just a little bar that's 10% filament. But if I tap on the table, you can hear it's almost as solid as PLA, but it does have some flex to it. It's pretty hard to flex. I printed this one at 240 with a 50 degree bed. It did like to print a little bit hotter. I printed it on the powder coated sheet. It did seem to stick well, but I did have quite a few failures when I first started printing with this material. I just couldn't print as fast as I could with that inland TPE. I'm not sure why, because this flexible is pretty rigid, but I had to lower the speed of the printer to get some successful prints. Kind of the same thing with the cooling. You can see this one, no cooling at all. This one was full cooling, but the stringing got a lot worse. The base model is pretty rigid. So here you can see the failure that I'm talking about with this filament. That's pretty common to see with flexible. It just can't push it into the hot end because you're probably going too fast and it just rolls past the feeder gear. You can see it here in the idler door. And just a quick note on speed when I give you these values and percentages. I'm using the stock Prusa profile from Prusa Slicer with a 0.2 layer height for flexible filament and I'm adjusting the temperatures. Any speed adjustment that I make, I'm just adjusting it right here. And you can see the feed rate 100% right here. I'm just running that down to the percentage that I think where it's printing well. Most of these I did 60% and the X60 I did at 40%. Just to give you an idea of what I'm doing to slow down those prints. I thought it was just a little more consistent this way than creating new profiles. Next up we have the Fiberology from Wolfworks 3D. They say that this is a 40D hardness. They call it Fiberflex. And I had a really hard time with this filament, especially when trying to get it to stick to the bed. This one I printed a little cooler at 210 and the bed was at 50C. But I actually had to switch over to the smooth PEI sheet to get this to stick and stay down. That's not a quality of flex that I usually see. Everything else usually sticks like glue. So this one's kind of unusual. I didn't have a very large sample, so I couldn't try multiple tests, but I did have lots of failures with this filament. The Benchy really didn't come out any good at all. You can see some of the other filament has bled into it, so don't count that against it, but it just didn't print that well. And the bar is the same way. You can see this stuff is really flexible. It has a lot of spring to it. This is some pretty unusual filament. I didn't have a whole lot of luck with it, but maybe if I can get some more, I might give it another try. And then we have our Ninja Flex from Ninja Tech. This is probably the most common flexible filament. A lot of people refer to flexible filament as Ninja Flex. And I have to say, out of all the filaments, this is the most flexible that turned out the best. Again, I did benchies where there's no cooling and with full cooling. This guy had no cooling. You can see the overhang there. This one had full cooling. And by far, this is the best benchy that I got out of all the flexible. It turned out really well. Also, I just kind of like the texture of the Ninja Flex. It's a little bit rougher coated. It's pretty nice. This is still really flexible. Remember, this is an 85A shore hardness. And here's the flexible bar. It bends real easy. I printed all these on the powder coated sheet, running at about 230 degrees on the nozzle, 50 degrees on the bed, and I lowered the feed rate down to 60%. Super happy with how the Ninja Flex came out. And then we have the Kodak Flexible Filament. It is rated at a 98A. There's really nothing special about this. It does have kind of an odd pattern on the outside of the models, but I think that's because of the condition of the filament. The filament looked almost a little melted when I pulled it out of the box. 
Maybe it got a little bit too hot while it was shipping, I'm not sure. The Benji's pretty subpar, a lot of stringing. The overhang does look good. This is with no cooling. I didn't even try with cooling because I really wasn't impressed with this filament. The bar, somewhat flexible. This is a pretty rigid flex. You can see with the vase. It's pretty hard to squish. It doesn't just flatten right down. So it's an okay filament, but not my favorite. And then we have the NinjaTech eel filament. This is the stuff that's conductive. It's pretty hard to print. My results didn't turn out really well. I didn't have a very big sample to try it out, so maybe I need to do some more testing. But up here in the vase model, as it started to get towards the top, it started to separate like it was going to jam. And you can see kind of from the bar, it is fairly flexible. I did run this at 230C with a 50 degree bed, and I lowered it down to 60% feed rate. I got some results, but I'm not super happy with them. But let's see just how conductive this stuff is real quick. So this 80 millimeter bar has 10% infill, and it's setting around 715, 720 ohms. So the resistance is kind of high, but it might be good enough for small projects. That might be something we have to test in the future. Then we go to our Treed Flexibility TPA. And man, this stuff is hard to print. It is just really flexible filament, and it's even hard to feed into the feeder gears to get the filament sensor to trigger. I printed this one at 240C on the nozzle, 50 degree on the bed. They do recommend going higher on the bed temp, but using the powder coated sheet, this stuff stuck like crazy. It was super prone to jamming. I got about a half a benchy, and then I did finally get a full benchy. Again, my sample size was pretty small. The vase was so flexible, as it'd get around a certain point, the nozzle would push it to the side, and it wouldn't even complete. I pulled the bar test off a little bit too soon, so it is permanently deformed. But this stuff is just crazy flex. The benchies, you can almost squash them all the way to the ground. This was printed at 60% speed, but I probably should have done it a little bit slower. Would have had a little bit more success. A very nice color, a pretty nice filament, but boy, it's a challenge. I definitely want to get a hold of some more of this and give it a try on some of the other extruders. And last but not least, we have the X60 filament. And when they say this is flexible, they're not kidding. This is almost like rubber glove material here. This is the most success that I had. I can't believe I even got the whole Vinci done. But it was pretty much just piling it up like frosting by the time it was finished. I tried this probably a dozen times before I got this result. I printed this at a 40% feed rate, 210 on the nozzle, 50 degree on the bed. It did stick to the powder coated sheet just fine. But this is not something that you want to use for your projects unless you are set up to print flex filament. In fact, I don't even know that they still make this X60 anymore. It might have been discontinued. I did manage to get 200 grams. But it's still going to need another test on some of the more advanced flexible extruders. And just to show you one of my other failures, this happened I don't know how many times. Again, the filament is so flexible, you can barely feed it into the extruder body. It took me five or six times to get the gears to even grip it. So some of the flexible filament worked out a little better than others. But as with all filament, that's going to be determined a lot on your slicer settings and the speed that you print at. So why are we doing all this flex testing? Well, I have a couple of different extruders that are specifically designed for flexible filament. And I wanted to get a good baseline on a lot of this flex before I started testing those. And given the Prusa Mark III has Bontech gears, it's usually a pretty good candidate for a baseline test like this. So in future videos, I would like to achieve PLA quality with even the most flexible X60 filament. But that will be in future videos. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.